Good afternoon. It is Tuesday, February 27th, 2024. I think there has never been a forecast discussion that has produced more of a racing heart from the National Weather Service here in Chicago. This is through and through from the very beginning to the very end. This is one of the most fascinating, the most dynamic weather pattern that has ever occurred, perhaps at least that I've been looking at these things, and especially within a 12-hour period that's expected to happen this afternoon, this evening into tonight. The things that are expected to unfold are, if these things unfold, it's literally unbelievable. It's I, Well, it's, it's nothing's ever unbelievable, literally, but uh, this is super, uh, super energizing, to say the least. Uh, we have, let's start off with the tornado threat. Uh, well, um, we were talking in earlier uh, version, the earlier episode of this, we were talking about something called the triple point. Now, I didn't see anybody talking about it, but that's what it looked like to me, that we would be either very close to the triple point or within the triple point. Now, for those people who have watched the movie Supercell, uh, you would be familiar with what the triple point is. The triple point is really where all of the storm chasers want to be. They want to be in that area. Triple point means it's a it's where the dry line, usually located around Texas and Oklahoma, it's a line, it's a front that separates the humid Gulf of Mexico air from the dry desert air. That dry line, when that dry line gets worked into storm systems, that's where you get tornado outbreaks. You see, the East Coast, the reason they don't get as many tornado outbreaks is because they don't have that dry line. That dry line is essential for the tornado development, especially for a significant for a significant outbreak of tornadoes. Okay, now the other thing that uh, enhances all this is if you get the dry line into the center of the surface low. Okay, here we go. Does the dry line ever hit Chicago? Usually not. Let's just talk about what's going on today, the synoptic weather setup, because it's truly amazing. A low pressure system, a very mature one, a strong storm system located moving across the Midwest, which is not connected so much, not directly connected to our severe weather outbreak, is moving across the upper Midwest, bringing heavy snow on the backside. In fact, blizzard conditions across Minnesota and the Dakotas. This is a strong storm system bringing blizzard conditions. So normally this type of a setup would be producing, bring warm air well above normal temperatures into our area, which it certainly has. In fact, today is expected to be the warmest meteorological winter day ever in the Chicago region on record since records go back to the 1870s. Although areas near the lake, it looks like temperatures are already dropping Uh, But temperatures further inland headed into the upper 70s today, mid and upper 70s. That includes the official reporting station at O'Hare Airport. The warmest temperature that's ever been recorded here in Chicago in the month of February or within the winter season is 75 degrees. We are coming very close to that. And the National Weather Service feels that we will be breaking that today. But let's... This is, there's so many headlines to talk about uh, this afternoon. That's just one of maybe five headlines to discuss within a 12-hour period. The next thing, I, okay, now, triple point, you would think no way. The low pressure system associated with all this is well to our north, so we're not going to have, one would think, we're not going to be getting the surface low right around here in Chicago. So even if there is somehow a dry line that makes it into the region, a triple point that one would think cannot be. But here's here's the other variable. A secondary area of low pressure associated with the first develops along the cold front of the primary low pressure. It develops in northwest Missouri, says the guidance for this afternoon. Oh my gosh. That storm system is the one that will be responsible for enhancing the severe weather risk in our area. And there is, believe it or not, an actual dry line that has made it into Missouri 
and is expected to continue into Illinois. We have humid air coming off the Gulf of Mexico, going all the way up through Missouri, through Illinois, and we have that cold front, but we have something else. We have an, a dry air mass wedged in between the two. And that's something that would happen. It's like a dry front that's moving through before the cold front moves through. That's the type of thing you would get out in the plains, out in Texas and Oklahoma. That's what increases our tornado potential. So now, uh, what about the third variable? So you have the dry line. This is a potential. We have the dry line. The question is, how far north will that dry line make it? And the other thing is we have a surface low, the center coming right through the county warning area, says the National Weather Service, that's somewhere between Rockford and Chicago or might include both cities. So this will be the area where the severe weather risk will be highest. This is especially true for places which will not have Lake Michigan be a variable. The National Weather Service is currently actually using the term triple point for real for portions of northwest Illinois. The tornado risk is there. It's not as high as I would have thought when you hear such terms. The primary severe weather risk, the National Weather Service tells us, is large hail, two inches in diameter. And the second, secondary severe weather risk is going to be the damaging winds of 58 mile per hour wind gusts or higher. But there is a conditional tornado risk, especially in the beginning, between the hours of 6 p.m. and 8 p.m., there could be, if any individual supercells develop, they are likely to have strong rotation due to the amount of shear. We have 1,500 of the J forward slash KG, which is enough for severe weather. So at the same time, as always, thunderstorms are not so predictable, and this may not happen altogether. Also, a lake breeze could stabilize. In the past, it has stabilized things along the lake. There's also been times where it has acted as a front, which has enhanced things. So, uh, okay, now we covered headline number one, the warm temperatures, the warmest winter day ever here in Chicago. Headline number two is the severe weather outbreak associated with the secondary area of low pressure, something that doesn't commonly happen in the Midwest. It's more common on the East Coast. Headline number three, I would say, is this triple point, the dry line, the dry line, you know, this, which is going to increase the chances for a tornado. Now let's go on to headline number four. Headline number four is... Just the phenomenal drop in temperatures, which the National Weather Service says they cannot emphasize this enough. We're going from June to January. That Those are their words. June to January. The weather today, not only is it June-like, there are many days in June where it does not get this warm. But we're going to wake up tomorrow morning to January temperatures well into the 20s, some areas even dropping to the teens. The National Weather Service wants to highlight the apparent temperature, what it will feel like 60 to 75 degrees colder tomorrow morning than what it will be this evening, with some areas, wind chills dropping below zero in our northwest counties, wind chills dropping into the single digits for portions of the Chicago metropolitan area tomorrow morning, a solid 70 degree drop in apparent temperature. That's by tomorrow morning. Okay, that's headline number four. Let's go to headline number five. Headline number five, but the most exciting one to me is really headline number six. But we're holding right now headline number five. So we have strong gusty winds that are going to come through as the cold air filters in tonight. And then we have a reinforcing shot of cold air that comes in tomorrow evening, which continues the blustery conditions. It continues the stronger winds before they die down tomorrow night, which provides radiational cooling at its max tomorrow night. That's especially if headline number six comes through. But let's go back to headline number five. So wind gusts of 30 to 40 miles per hour, nice and gusty, uh, arrives here after the front moves through, just sometime after midnight. But 
there is a possibility of something called a wind burst that could occur this after midnight tonight. That winds will be gusty regardless of whether this wind burst occurs. But the National Weather Service tells us that the environment, this is such a dynamic weather pattern occurring within such a short period of time, the pressure rises that will be occurring as the higher pressure filters in. It's just so intense. It's double what we go through with the bombogenesis, which is a drop in the pressure, 1 MB every hour for 24 hours on average. Here we're going to be seeing a pressure rise of about 2 MB per hour. So this is such a dynamic weather change within such a short period of time. The National Weather Service is telling us there's a possibility of a wind burst, which would be producing 50 mile per hour wind gusts or more in the middle of the night. But let's get on to headline number six, the most unpredictable part of this weather forecast, but in many ways, the most significant. And that is the accumulating snow, perhaps even a blizzard developing tonight Blizzard conditions, you know, the winds, we obviously have the winds. There are computer models right now which show one to two inches of snow, a solid one to two inches of snow, which will have a negative impact on the morning commute tomorrow morning. It will be producing hazardous travel should this materialize. A blowing snow hazard is mentioned by the National Weather Service. One to two inches of snow. However, there are a lot of things that have to come together for this to happen. But the reason the snowfall accumulations are so high, despite the limited moisture, has to do with the dynamic environment, the instability that will still be present later on in the night. That means there's a possibility for a snow squall, even a pretty significant snow squall. A snow squall is like a pop-up thunderstorm in many ways. So it might happen, it might not happen. There really isn't any way to know because some of the models are showing that it will happen. The European computer model is showing that it's not going to happen. The European computer model shows that the precipitation will end before the cold air moves in. Therefore, no snow, says the European computer model. The only thing is, even though in many cases the European computer model is the most accurate, when it comes to thunderstorms and when it comes to instability the higher resolution models are actually the winner over the European computer model. I know in New York they've mentioned they love the North American mesoscale model when dealing with storms 24 hours in advance. I've noticed when it comes to the short-term snowfall predictions, the National Weather Service tends to heavily rely upon that rapid refresh, the high resolution model. But those models do show snow Uh, They show, they do a better job at showing thunderstorm development or similar types of instability, convection, stuff like that. And those models do show snow squalls developing in the Chicago area later tonight. So, uh, again, the National Weather Service says they cannot emphasize enough the drastic change a season change from summer to winter that will be taking place this evening into tomorrow morning. We have a tornado risk in effect, especially the northwest portions of Illinois where the triple point is. Can you believe it? A triple point in northwest portions of Illinois. The storm chasers, they would know more than, you know, where they headed. You know, Chicago is not far from the triple point. There's even... uh, The triple point could certainly make it into the... It will be covering parts of the Chicago County Warning Area, which includes Rockford. This area, again, of surface low pressures moving right through the region. This is a secondary area of low pressure, which is developing as an offshoot of the primary low pressure, which is bringing blizzard conditions up in the Dakotas and Minnesota. There's one thing. It's not a headline, but it is something that we have not discussed And that's the warm front that will likely be developing with the secondary area of low pressure this afternoon. We mentioned that low pressure will be developing over northwest Missouri. And that front will likely, the warm front will likely extend east from that low pressure going straight to the Mississippi River. 
And as that storm system moves to the northeast, that warm front will also move northeast. A big question to the National Weather Service is whether the thunderstorm development will de- will develop ahead of the warm front or will it be behind the warm front? And that will be changing the nature of the storms. And there's other variables at all. There's other variables as well that are at play uh, to determine exactly when, what, and uh, what will be occurring, when will it be occurring, and where will it be occurring, as usual with thunderstorms. And therefore, there's a lot of unpredictability. But all we could say is that there is a severe weather risk. The last I checked, the Storm Prediction Center in Oklahoma put the Chicago region at only, it's significant, it's two out of five, but to me... I'm surprised to see how low it is. I'm surprised to see that it's only at a two. Now realize in defense of that, I one you know, there's one thing you could say is that although we do have a dry line, it's not as significant as some of the dry lines you see in Texas or Oklahoma, but uh, that dry line, the National Weather Service says, will also be responsible really for any severe thunderstorm development. I've been talking about the dry line and the triple point uh, as a way – reason to enhance the tornado risk but and that's true but it also enhances the severe weather risk in general the fact that it's going to be occurring all of this in the evening gives us a very small window for when tornadoes would occur uh, due to when after sunset the the instability tends to die down pretty quickly so it's really a small window, probably the closest to, if it does move in around six o'clock, it would probably happen very close to six o'clock. The window is six o'clock to eight o'clock, uh, but, uh, but the closer we are to when the sun is out, the when the, those storms move in, I believe the higher chance we would have at seeing a tornado, especially if an individual supercell develops, as opposed to a line of thunderstorms. That would reduce any tornado threat. Okay, so we covered this warm front. Now let's go on to the next thing, just to uh, bring this to completion. So we mentioned the reinforcing shot of cold air, bringing temperatures possibly down to some locations into the teens tomorrow night. We have on Thursday, it starts off cold, but temperatures go above normal by afternoon. Temperatures rising into the 40s. There is some type of a system that might bring precipitation into the region on Friday. But in general, the next major subject is the unseasonable warmth that returns to our area over the weekend. Temperatures going well into the 70s. Some areas will have temperatures in the 80s. In our area, over the weekend, this is something which is likely to occur. And to really bring this to its full completion, we'll have to end off another similar storm system developing a powerhouse in the beginning of next week. We'll likely be bringing another strong cold front, another one, similar. We have unseasonable warmth, followed by a blast of cold air next week along with precipitation. So stay tuned to that. At this point, because it's so far out, there's no way to come up with uh, this a forecast that would include intense dynamics to what we're saying right now. That's just because it's too far in advance, but this is a strong storm system. And at one point, the European computer model was showing a storm of hurricane strength developing for the beginning part of next week, uh, pushing 12 to 20 inches of snow into the upper Midwest. That was at one point. That's just to give you an idea of what type of storm could be developing in the beginning of next week, the unseasonable warmth that we'll be dealing with ahead of the storm, and then the drastic change in temperatures with next week's cold front. It will be very similar. Uh, And I wish everybody a wonderful day. Have an exciting day for the storm chasers. Uh, Please stay safe. And the best way has always been to have a weather radio if you want to stay safe with tornadoes. But I'm going to tell you something else uh, because a lot of people don't have a weather radio. If you don't have a weather radio, the Storm Shield app is very good. It will tell you a tornado warning. The phone will start talking. It's recommended by meteorologist Bob Clubs, who has a little Chabura, a little 
thing going on in Paducah, Kentucky. Has a bunch of followers and on Patreon and for in Southeast Missouri, even St. Louis followers, just for that area. He recommends the Storm Shield app. There's another app as well. So if you're not able to get a weather alert radio, so the, if you could just put the Storm Shield app on your phone and make sure it's going to be activated when there's tornadoes and other severe weather, that would be a very wise safety thing to do, especially if these things will be occurring after dark. Stay safe. Thank you for listening. I wish everybody a wonderful day.